In 2020, my online shop that takes in and sells pet reptiles received 519 orders. Last year, it received 116 orders, and I did a video breaking down the entire experience of building that from scratch. And then at the end of the video, I revealed all of my earnings, my revenue, expenses, and profit. And today, I'll be doing the same thing, but updated for this year. So feel free to go watch the previous video. It'll give you a lot of context, but you don't need to know, and I'll give you a quick recap. If you're just here to note my profit and how much money I made, you can skip to the end of the video. Feel free to do it any time, but it's been an extremely interesting year, and I think it's an interesting story, so feel free to stick around and listen. This is a video you can just listen to and throw on if you want, uh, but I'll also fill the entire video with lots of video clips and photos, because I've documented everything, the entire experience. So it's almost gonna be like a slideshow and a little video series as we go. But if you choose, you can simply just listen and you'll understand all the context. So I recommend that you do watch the previous video, but if you don't want to, here's a quick recap. In 2006, I was six years old and started making nature videos. And then in 2012, I made this YouTube channel where I actually publicly started uploading them. By 2015, I narrowed my focus down to just reptiles. And then in 2017, a friend and I started Emerald Scales Com. We started off by buying reptiles from Craigslist, giving them any necessary rehabilitation, and then selling them online and shipping them to anywhere in the United States. This was great practice caring for various species, working with customers, and learning rehabilitation because so many people do such a bad job caring for pet reptiles and there were plenty to go around. To get started, I invested $1,000 that I made from YouTube videos in my younger years, uh, along with some money I made from flipping products on eBay. My friend, who had some other side jobs, invested his own $1,000, and we used that to start this. Um, my experience flipping on eBay really helped transition us into animals, and then his experience with photography in various species and me working on marketing, we were able to create a website from scratch that basically had a full business model built around it. Our long-term goal was to create something that we could branch out and hire employees for that could really run the company, and we would simply have another sustainable source of income because it's always good to diversify. My only source of income was YouTube, and becoming an adult and building a career, I wanted multiple revenue streams just as he did. And at the same time, we get to help out a lot of animals and create a reliable and trustworthy place for people to get their own animals. We launched it about six months later in 2018, starting off with eight animals. And thankfully, because I love making videos, the entire journey is documented and you can watch it all on this YouTube channel in a vlog series from day one all the way back to when it started in 2017. Once we had some traction from the videos and Instagram popularity and stuff like that, we were able to start just taking in animals without having to pay for them, which really helped cut back on expenses because people realized we were a reliable person to give their animal to. And then once there were so many people trying to send us animals, we actually started charging for them to come in. So it was another source of income, not only selling the animals, but actually offering a service where we rehome your animal for you, where it's essentially guaranteed that we're gonna find a really great person for it to go to. So we made money with the animals coming in and the animals going out. In 2019, my friend and I had different ideas and different goals with what we were doing. So we decided to separate, split up the company, and I continued it under the name Emerald Scales. I then moved out of my parents' home, rented my first home, and dedicated two thirds of the house solely to Emerald Scales and the animals. By the end of 2019, we had sold over 220 animals. And if you don't want it to be spoiled how much we made up to this point at the end of 2019, you can go watch the video now. So pause this in the next five seconds if you don't want to hear the number. Well, after making thousands and thousands of dollars every single month in revenue, the expenses for these animals were so ridiculously high that we only made $770 was my in-pocket profit, a super low number. So not quite another revenue stream yet. And that's where we come to 2020. I figured out the model, figured out the goals, and the goal of this year was to build something that actually made a little bit more money so it was a bit more sustainable and reliable. And so Emerald Scales continued in January of 2020.
I was constantly at FedEx because after making some unboxing reptile videos, lots of people realized that I was a person that they could send their animals to. So we received a lot of orders for that and I was just there and back almost every single day getting packages and working on unboxing videos. It was primarily leopard geckos, which thankfully are a favorite of mine. They're probably my favorite reptile species for some reason. And we ended up taking so many in that I didn't have enough space, even though I rented a whole house to dedicate to these animals. Um, the time has come. I. I have more space. Going from two bedrooms in my family's house to 1,300 square feet in my own house. Uh, yeah, I moved. I didn't really announce it because like who cares? I mean, some people probably care. But I was also living there and I needed at least a little bit of space to live. So I ended up setting up some more shelving at my parents' house where I stored some of the bearded dragons. Uh, I would then go there and care for them and they helped do some of the basic care there and I would ship them out from their home as a way to basically spread out because I really wanted to take advantage of every resource to avoid having to decline people wanting to send in because there were all these people that were moving and could just no longer sustain their animals and I wanted to do the best I could to help. And obviously this also helps the company because more animals means more revenue. Because there was less than a thousand square feet for all these animals, a lot of my time went into the logistics and organization of just all of this. So playing around with different storage and different ways to put everything, it was just constantly moving around and we kept trying to make it look as good as possible. Uh, it was Shira's first vet visit. He's in my lap. Here's He was terrified. But thankfully he was nice and healthy and he got his little vaccines and he was good to go. And now he's a a nice big boy. And in January 2020, this YouTube channel hit 300,000 subscribers. So now onto the sales of the reptiles that we sold. It was two corn snakes, one rainbow boa, two bearded dragons, seven axolotls, because we were actually breeding axolotls, uh, and there were a couple left over from last year. Two crested geckos, six leopard geckos, one redfoot tortoise, one Russian tortoise, and one ball python. One of the beardies sold for $405, a redfoot for $220, and most of the leopard geckos were about $150, and each axolotl sold for $60. But since it was Alice breeding the axolotls, most of the profit from those went to her, and I just took a portion because I did the marketing and the shipping. This was a total of 24 animals sold that made a revenue of $3,500, so a pretty good nest egg to start the year and to use that money for the various expenses that we're gonna start adding up. In the first week of January, we actually had 30 animals already on the calendar ready to ship. They were sold, the customers were verified, and we were just waiting for their days to come up. So these were sales mostly from 2019 and they were ready to go out. But this also meant that we had to spend a lot on shipping because the overnight labels add up pretty quickly. And at the same time, it was confirmed that 117 more animals were coming in. These were people that already paid us to send them in. They already had the supplies. All they needed was a shipping label and a ship day to go to FedEx and send the animal. So we had to figure out exactly how many we were taking in at a time and when they would come in. One person shipped to Tegu in 20 degree weather. And that just shows that there aren't issues on every side of things where just even just the intakes, just the very first step of these animals, a lot of people are very bad at following instructions where the likelihood of animals coming in even worse condition, just because they didn't follow our pretty simple shipping guidelines and conditions, animals came in varying conditions and uh, thankfully the tegu was actually okay and that was a video you can check that out in the same video i decided to still go out of the way and help some really unhealthy animals that i was hoping that we'd be able to save because although there were plenty of healthy ones that were ready to ship in um, i still had an interest in helping as many as possible and try and help some others so i drove to virginia this month to pick up a ball python who was in horrible condition, and you can go check that video out. Sadly, it was just way too bad though, and it did not survive much longer uh, after getting him or her, I'm not actually sure, but it was still an interesting and pretty rewarding experience because it was one of the worst ball pythons that I've ever seen in person. So it, it was just too far gone to do anything for, and that owner really cared. They were investing a lot of resources and we were kind of just the last hope and it still wasn't enough for the ball python. And then of course this same month, somebody lied about a blue tongue skink that they sent in. It was in way worse condition than they had claimed. They were like, yeah, it just has these couple issues and I think I have clips of it. It was horrendous. It's the worst lizard that I have ever received. It might not be much of a surprise, but he did not survive long at all. We did our best to unclog him and clean him up and work with him, but there was such an overwhelming number of problems that I am completely impressed that he even survived being shipped, but he did not survive much longer after that. So we started the year 
So we started the year with some really healthy and really happy animals, but also started with some really sick ones that kind of just put us in a bad mood because there were just some pretty bad animals, so yeah. And the same month, there were 40 more people that paid to send their animals in. They just didn't actually send them in yet. And this gave us a revenue of $3,771. Uh, also a very useful amount of money, but most of this is going to the shipping kits and shipping supplies. We only made a little bit of profit actually off people sending animals in. We spent $3,600 on shipping this month, $380 on supplies. This was mostly at Home Depot, Lowe's, Target, uh, Doobierriches.com, which I actually have a link to, so if you want 10% off insects, you can use that, and I get $5 in credits to buy more Doobie Roaches, but uh, we still obviously had to buy insects for the animals, and I also spent a little bit of money at PetSmart. Oh no. The thing is, sometimes we do need like a, a light bulb in a rush, or we really need a uh, some rep to save for something. So I did occasionally pop over to PetSmart and spend a little bit of money, even if it hurt my heart, so. But it is on the list of expenses. I paid out $1,100 to basically getting help with the animals because I don't have enough time physically to do it all myself. So I have to get help from people who do the customer support and help me out with actually caring, feeding, and cleaning the animals. There was also $300 in transaction fees. This is just the little bit that PayPal and Stripe take when I do credit card transactions and PayPal transactions. And it just shows that those little tiny transactions really do add up a lot because that was another $300 expense on top of the month. There were $800 in refunds. Uh, sometimes people get canceled because they don't have the adequate setup for an animal they buy. Other times people end up not sending their animal in either because it died or they found somewhere else to send it or they couldn't wait as long as we needed them to. So yeah, $800 was refunded this month. And then the housing. So obviously I was living in this home as well. So the way I break this up is basically two thirds of the physical rent go as a business expense towards the animals because that's how much square footage they were taking up. And then I did half of the electricity, which is used for the, the heat mats and the heat lamps and the fans for the axolotls and the water filters. And then the other half was my personal electricity, like charging my car, uh, the hot water, just normal stuff you use electricity for, computers and stuff. And then half of the water, which we went through a lot because we had turtles and axolotls and just all the water bowls. And then the other half was me taking showers and stuff. So uh, basically this totaled $1,088 averaged across the year for housing, and that gets applied each month. So after expenses of $7,271 in January, we made a profit this month of negative $15. Not too surprising, I didn't expect too much made this month. Also, it was just me and Alice doing all of this at the time. Uh, I'd stopped working with one employee in December, so it went from a team of three to just the two of us, and that was taking quite a bit of time, but at least I didn't have to pay quite as much out to contractors and freelancers and employees. It's good and bad, basically. Now, on to February. Seeing just how much of my time and energy went into all of the Emerald Scales projects in January, while still making only negative $15, um, I realized we really needed to streamline, really needed to save money, and save time. Uh, one example of doing this is using heat tape instead of heat mats. So I invested in some of this, got it custom cut and stuff, and it's basically a cheap strip of heating that can grow across a lot of animals. I also started using more compact shelving that I basically custom built out of PVC. Uh, the enclosures we ended up shrinking a bit because most of the geckos and smaller animals were not there for that long, aside from a select few that were really unhealthy. But any that came in healthy, we'd simply watch for a number of weeks and then it would instantly sell and be shipped out very soon after because the weather was pretty good and uh, they really weren't here for that long. So I was comfortable giving them the bare bone basics and I needed to, to save money on all these expenses. So shrinking them down to smaller enclosures, they had their heating and their cool side and their water bowl and their hides and their food bowl, but it was definitely simplified, but I was comfortable doing this because they're here for a temporary short amount of time. Those that are here for longer get more enrichment and they're treated more like a personal pet um, instead of just a temporary rehome. So lots of turtles were sent in. I ended up having to expand to the back porch, which I didn't think was a big deal. It was clean. Um, but certain people did not appreciate that. Uh, they basically 
managed to figure out that I had healthy and happy and uninvasive turtles on the back porch, and uh, I ended up getting threatened with fines, so I had to move the turtles. <laughs> so uh, we couldn't take as many turtles in. I still had no free time and no space. Uh, me and Alice were living in a single bedroom of the home. It was about a foot 14 foot wide room, probably like 150 square feet or so. And this was our living space, our eating space. Two desks, because it was both of our offices. I was making the videos and editing them all here. And she was doing her own work and helping with emails and customer support, all just in this single room. And it was pretty stuffy. And just both of our, I mean, mental health, I guess, was slowly deteriorating because uh, everything was just kind of closing in around us and we really needed to get animals out. And so I did actually decide to rehome uh, Ember, my Kenin sand boa. She freed up a little bit of space. I did a video on this. I really wasn't attached to her. I liked one comment. They said the video reminded them of like a couple that agrees to politely break up and separate ways. That was basically me and my snake. And uh, I actually sold her on the site and she went through the exact same rehoming process that every other animal does. And she went off to a subscriber. That's also a video that you can watch. I decided to raise the rehoming prices because we need more revenue, basically. It's as simple as that. So it became a bit more expensive to send us animals. Uh, but people generally are still willing to pay this. We lose a couple people here and there that are like, oh, I can't quite pay that much. Can you lower it? And we have to be stern and say no for our own reasons. Like, obviously, we were very tight on space and we really had to limit it um, to a very select number of animals, even though it was difficult to say no and decline them, it's in the animal's best interest, because otherwise it would be irresponsible to take in more that we can handle. But uh, there was some good news. I hit eight years on YouTube, which was pretty cool. It's now half of my life has actually been on YouTube because my first channel was made 10 years ago and I'm now 20. So yeah, half my life has basically gone to YouTube. Not really, but uh, I think that's a great thing. Shiro, please get out of the way. And right after hitting that milestone, it was Emerald Scales' birthday. So I did an unboxing. And I think it's funny because you can see in this unboxing video just how ridiculously tired I am because I had no free time. But I really loved making the unboxing videos. They were super exciting to make and super fun. And I put most of my energy into this content, but I just could not cover up how exhausted I was from dealing with all the other stuff that was happening with Emerald Scales. Still, it was really cool. We got a bunch of baby box turtles, which I did a video on. The problem is we can't sell turtles under four inches for profit. So it was literally just you pay shipping and we send them to you as long as you have an appropriate setup and diet. It's a lot of work for these, but that's why it's good that we charge for animals coming in because we can legally make money taking them in, just not sending them out. So it's like a little loophole, I guess and uh, it, it works out. Now, we only sold eight animals in February. However, they still made $1,852 uh, because some of them were more expensive. Someone bought a ball python with a Patreon coupon. If you join my Patreon thing, it's five bucks a month to support me, and you actually get 10% off all Emerald Scales orders. So you can save a lot. Uh, so we sold a ball python, two leopard geckos, two corn snakes, a milk snake for 170, a hog nose for 390, and a king snake for $370. So still added up pretty well. We started implementing fees on canceled orders because some people will buy an animal and then regret it and have to get their money back. But I still have to pay for the customer support to manage that person and I have to pay the PayPal fees because PayPal changed it where we don't always get the money back with the, like, the fee back. So for that reason, I started withholding 6% of each canceled order. Uh, it was in our terms of service and now it's even more clear. And uh, yeah, each time someone canceled, we'd keep 6%. So we made $60 off these fees uh, from five canceled orders. And you'll see just how vital these fees were later in the video. Intakes made up $3,972, which is over twice what we made from <laughs> actually selling animals. Uh, we spent $900 on shipping animals because those overnight fees and shipping is expensive. $500 went to other humans helping me out, which was Alice at the time. She did some emails for me. $200 in transaction fees and $700 in refunds because people still cancel. This totaled $4,762 in revenue with a profit of $1,112. Deduct that 15 bucks and that is a year-to-date profit of $1,107. So we actually made some solid money here. A thousand bucks, even if I did spend 14 hours a day every day with no weekends doing it, 
it's something and it's a bit better than it had been. And so we move in to March of 2020 and I take another drink of water, twice a month in fact. Again, I needed to save time and money and all of this energy. So, so I implemented some more automation, which really helped out. Basically, when somebody had to send us an animal, what we would do is take their zip code, calculate the shipping, and then add a fee on top of that that we can profit, and then send them a PayPal invoice, they pay the PayPal invoice, and then we send them the supplies and they send us the animal. This just takes time and energy, so I ended up doing a flat rate anywhere from the USA, it's the same price to send us an animal. So I made a product page where you actually buy an intake kit and it's all done with a single order and it was way easier. Basically it started at $125 to send us an animal. You could choose to pay $35 to skip the waiting list and actually push yourself up higher. And that was just an extra little bit of profit that helps us out. And people that are really in a rush can skip in line basically. If you're sending multiple animals, the fee goes up a bit by bit each time you add another animal up to five animals and then it's basically the same price um, and if you have certain things like aquatic turtles it was an additional I think $30 or something because we did not make money off the turtles shipping them out and it was more expensive to house them because I couldn't actually keep them on my porch because of some pesky people uh, we got in some unique animals someone sent in a bunch of juvenile bearded dragons uh, we got a second Burmese python, which are pretty rare for us to get. Uh, some baby green tree snakes came in, which were in very high demand, and I have not gotten any since that. Uh, I have videos on both the beardies and the green snakes that you can check out. The unboxings were extremely popular now, as they already were, but my channel views actually went up 53% in March. It just like all time, which was ridiculous. So that was really cool, and... Um, really helped get the word out about Emerald Scales. So I finally hired another employee and hiring employees is really weird. I've only ever done one interview where I was actually the interviewee. And after that, I only became the interviewer. And I am, I, if, you've, if you've been interviewed by me, you know, it was probably kind of awkward. So basically you send an application and I pick like my favorite 5% from those. I then call random people that apply and get to know them. And then my favorites of the ones that I call, uh, I do in-person interviews with, and then I choose who I'm gonna hire. And uh, then I send you like your W-9 form. I don't know which one is for employees, but yeah, I hired a new employee who was solely there to help with animal care. The pay is generally starts at around the same as retail places, uh, but it's a bit more fun. It's a bit more personal. You're just coming to my house and helping out. So and, uh, yeah, I try to give raises and stuff, but there's not that much money to go around. So <laughs> uh, I found a baby copperhead. That was kind of cool. And I turned 20 years old. I'm a big boy in March. <laughs> So I sold 18 animals, four leopard geckos, averaging $200 each, one Colombian rainbow boa at $270, one longicata boa for $250, probably could have gone for more. Uh, the blue tongue skink for $450, two ball pythons, uh, one of which was with a recurring order coupon because I love when customers buy multiple times. Not just because it's more sales, but because if you buy an animal once and get approved, it's extremely likely you'll be very easy to work with again. And so we love having those recurring people. Some people have bought three or four animals and it's really great to see them come back. It means they enjoyed the service and we enjoyed them. And it, we kind of form a nice relationship between the, the client and the company. So uh, yeah, sometimes we send out coupons to buyers and they can use those to save some money because it's worth it. Uh, we also sold a Lichianus for $860, which is actually $100 off because they were a member on Patreon. So pretty good. Five bucks for Patreon and they saved a hundred. Um, and lychees are pretty expensive. So it was listed for like a, almost a thousand, I think. We made $30 on fees and we had 23 intake orders, which totaled $1,800, which made a revenue of 4,267 bucks. But we spent 9,334 dollars. Ow, my poor heart. We spent twice as much as we made. <laughs> uh, it was $4,000 on shipping, $1,000 on supplies, 500 of which was just for frozen thawed or frozen rodents for the, the snakes. And then of course the thousand on housing and then $2,300 towards help because now I'm paying two people for their assistance with emails and care. So that went up. And there was also $1,000 in refunds, which was a little ouchy. Uh, that's a profit of negative $2,100 which brings our year-to-date earnings to negative $1,000.
Let's move on to April, shall we? I hit 420,000 subscribers right before 420, 2020. So it's really not funny. I thought it was funny at the time. Uh, we started selling insects at this time. This is a project Alice took on where we began breeding springtails, which are little um, bugs that feed on gross stuff in enclosures. And I can't complain, this is another source of income. So we listed those on the site. Um, at this point, we were really starting to hate our living conditions. And we made maybe the dumb decision to move, but within the home. I've moved houses, what, like five or six, seven, eight times. I've moved a lot for some reason. And moving houses is difficult, but not nearly as difficult as moving within your own house. Meaning that Emerald Scales moved from downstairs to upstairs, and we moved upstairs to downstairs with some things moved around. So it was still two thirds of the space to animals. But we, <laughs> I got the bed stuck in the hallway. So <laughs> it was a nightmare. It took literal days just to do this. And I kind of regret it. But basically we were trying to free up space and make it feel a little bit more livable. I think I had already agreed to actually renew the lease for this home at this point. Cause I, I couldn't actually qualify to buy a house yet. Um, so yeah, that was our attempt at that. And it was, nightmarish because there was one set of stairs and everything was like clogging it. I won't talk about it. Yeah, whatever. Um, I also got to have a lot of fun with the unboxings featuring a certain little germy germ that some people have just, just a couple people have caught in the past year. And that was kind of the, um, the theme of one of the unboxings. However, this came along with some irony later down the road. Foreshadowing. I I'm foreshadowing because this illness affected Emerald Scales, believe it or not. <laughs> Um, we got some really gross axolotls in this um, unboxing. We still actually have those. It took them a while to get healthy. We might breed those, and by that I mean Alice might breed those, but we'll see, because it takes a ton of work for that. But people really loved the axolotls, and they sold fast. Uh, I also released some unboxing merch, so yeah, that's good. And I spent $6,123 in April. We made $260 off bugs. That was 10 spring to orders. Uh, I then got a portion of that while Alice got the majority since she was doing the work and I just did the marketing. I made $165 just off fees. That was nine fees. And uh, $2,975 off 18 intake kits purchased with a profit of $20,000, $2,788 20, $2, for April. Um, so we're, we're getting back up there. We're now at positives again. Another sip of water from May. I'm only at May and I've already drank the majority of this. So the first half of the month, there really wasn't much interesting to share. Me and Alice are just hating our lives in this home, caring for animals, shipping them out and stuff. I listed a bunch of turtles, but they took forever to get rid of. So I was just feeling cooped up in the house, so busy, stuck in this place with these animals, stuck in a, a part of town that I just didn't feel that comfortable in, didn't feel that welcome in. Um, and I would just casually browse online at other rental homes because I couldn't purchase something else yet, like I said. The thing is, I, I didn't have the time or energy to actually go look at any houses. So I just look at pictures and inquire every so often. And uh, I decided to apply to one with a couple images that had a picture of the living room and the kitchen and one of the bedrooms and uh, the front of the house, obviously, I could find on Google Maps. And um, I, yeah, I just applied because why not? And I got accepted on May 28th, actually, for the house. My credit score passed and my background check was all good. <laughs> and so <laughs> we impulse rented a house, basically, for another year. It was 45 minutes away in a completely different city. And we had a second house that I just leased. Um, obviously, this money to lease this other house was not from Emerald Scales. This was from my other revenue streams, which is primarily YouTube. We were accepted for a home and we might actually end up moving. We profited $881 and sold 10 animals, but who cares about that? Because in June, we moved literally the first day. We moved like two to four days after applying to a house. And I guess I do have a tendency to impulsively do things. This was my second biggest impulse purchase ever after my car. I'm very stingy with money until there's this one just big thing I can impulse get. So yeah, I impulse got a car last year, then a year later, I impulse rented a house. We had literally never seen the house. So on June 1st, I just drove to U-Haul right in the morning, picked one up, and for the first time, while bringing our stuff to the house, we actually see 
the house because of the the coffee cough germ um they didn't actually do anything in person it was all online we just we did a phone call about the house they were like yeah here's the issues with it just if there's any other issues let us know and they just literally just left the keys outside the house and we're like okay it's all yours uh, see you in a year let us know if you need anything and i <laughs> entered this house and it was huge I, I it wasn't it's not actually that massive like but to me compared to it was very big it's literally just a a family house that you like two people would probably get with like a kid or two and it, me and alice were like oh my god even just the closet was bigger than my previous bedroom I don't even own any clothes i own like and we could store both cars safely inside and um we could cook and by that i mean alice could cook and i could eat it because the kitchen was actually usable and it had a separate bedroom where there's just a bed no offices it wasn't a bed plus offices plus animals plus where the cats are living the weirdest thing was there were multiple places to sit i could sit on the bed I could sit on the floor. I could sit in my brand new dedicated office space. I could sit in the garage. I could sit on the back porch. I could sit in the living room, in the dining room. I was like, why does anyone need this many places to sit? It was so weird because previously you could sit on the bed and sit in your office chair. That was it. That, there was nowhere else to sit in the previous home. This was really a month of investing in our own well-being none of this was emerald scales expenses so none of it's included but i'm just including this because it was a very important milestone um i was able to buy furniture we went to rooms to go and we're like a couch let's buy it and we did we bought a couch um i bought a tv a couple months later i've never owned a tv before we don't even use the tv i'll be honest i could probably sell the tv but it was like it made it feel like a complete living room and we bought a, a coffee table i don't know it felt like a good little reward aka a big reward for <laughs> what we had been going through so I do not regret that at all however in June we couldn't ship anything why because FedEx and USPS and everything was clogged up by medical supplies because you know why it was all just too risky and and the companies they didn't have many employees working it was all this stuff so we couldn't ship anything we did sell a few things um but to say to tell you to it straight we made negative two thousand six hundred and twenty seven dollars from remote skills again not none of the personal expenses are in this this was just selling the animals and i also had to buy a lot of supplies for the animals plus new bugs for to feed them plus new shelving for the previous home because temporarily i was actually going to keep the animals in the first house because the long-term plan was buy something early 2021 which that's actually still the plan and uh, just basically sell as many animals as we can and minimize it for a bit for a few months until i can qualify for a mortgage because i need two years of um, income that are, is actually like enough to for companies to trust me with hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy a house so understandable uh year to date was a li little over a thousand dollars after this july still couldn't ship in fact we s my chair says squeaky july which means we got to take a sip of water in july we still could not ship animals this also means we could not ship animals in it was just everything was halted and stuck because we didn't know what was happening in the world we couldn't ship anything anywhere and we sold zero animals i was focused on not really listing them and stuff and we couldn't ship them anyway so i just didn't even bother listing new animals however tons of intake kits were purchased people were losing their jobs and losing their homes and all this stuff and they couldn't keep the animals so that actually spiked um, in July and that revenue helped keep Emerald Scales afloat. I sold some of my personal stuff on Craigslist and Twitter actually, um, sold a bunch of tanks that we didn't need. I sold some old furniture, like that old shelf in videos, I actually sold that for more than I bought it for, which was, I mean, that's cool. And yeah, just supplies I didn't need, just creating a little bit more revenue. However, July was kind of the hiatus month because this was after almost a year of just not being that happy in this previous house um so we did just fun little things we started a little garden in the backyard that the landlord let us do for the first time in quite a long time we took more than a few hours of time off again me and alice tend to do things impulsively uh, we live in north carolina decided i think like a day or two in advance what's the best thing to do while everyone is trapped themselves inside scared to go outside and enter the world let's go to florida 
the 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 epicenter of of the germy germs we knew that it was obviously a bit of a risk there wasn't that much known but we wanted to get out nobody was anywhere and we went to universal and it was very empty they actually did a very good job keeping things sanitary so shout out to universal um since we weren't satisfied being at universal for a few days we then went to disney world <laughs> just for a day, because why not? It's in the same area. And then we went to the beaches um, a couple days later. We ended up extending the trip. We were not gone for very long. Uh, all the animal care that needed to get done, what, oh wait, I forgot to say that I fired the previous employee. What month was that? I forgot to put it in the notes. Yeah, so you know the employee that I hired in March? Um, I fired her two weeks later, <laughs> but in July, the animal care was covered. Uh, actually on the way to Florida, I got hit by a shredded tire. I guess someone had a blowout. And so my car actually went into service for two weeks after this. And that made things a bit more difficult. Even though everyone was on lockdown, animals don't care if you're on lockdown. You still have to keep them alive. And I was still all over the place, moving, d driving, picking stuff up, picking up animals. It was um, still kind of hectic for me. So uh, I borrowed Alice's car for this time. Uh, we made $2,128 in July from intake kits and bugs. There were three cancellations because we couldn't take animals in, so some people had to cancel sending in. But yeah, 2K just from intake kits for the future. And I primarily had to pay for help with the care this month. We uh, had to pay $1,300 in refunds because people had to cancel. $1,300 in supplies as well for the animals. And only $200 in shipping because we just shipped out bugs because... If a bug is late and dies, it's not as big of a deal as a reptile, or at least that's my opinion, but I could be wrong, I guess. We lost $2,000 in July. Again, that's not related to personal expenses like going to Universal Disney and the beaches, so yeah. It was literally the week that everyone was like, Florida beaches are like exploding with illness and we were just hanging out. It was very warm, it was, it was quite nice. In August, we got back to work. I got my car back, which was nice. There were some delays shipping animals out, but there were certain select days, like we could ship on Monday, because if it was late a day, it's okay, because it would still get there Wednesday and the animals were safe. So we, we were carefully shipping things out and we got lots of orders. Of course, one of the days where I was running some errands and doing some important Emerald Scales business, I don't know what I was doing. Uh, I had to drive through some water. It was like kind of flooding. Okay, it was flooding. The road was completely flooded um, <laughs> in like downtown Raleigh. There were tons of cars on the road and I was driving like five miles per hour and my entire bumper ripped off of the car. I mean, it was a couple thousand dollars to get this repaired. Insurance covered part of it, um, but <laughs> my car went back into service. I had it for like a week. After two weeks of not having it, it was gone again. I was without it for a month. Total. Also during this month we sold 14 animals and one voucher. You can actually buy like a gift card on Emerald Scales and someone bought one for 50 bucks for I think their fiance or something. Uh, that was $4,000 in revenue. Uh, three ball pythons actually sold at $500 each. A Sokata sold for $500 and we also sold a spider ball python. What? Um, we donate the money that we make from spider ball pythons. So basically what I do is I list them as sexless so that you don't know which sex it is and you can't really breed it um, without knowing. And then we also verify the people, make sure they don't seem like breeders. Um, Cause obviously you can lie about it, but it's, it's pretty easy to tell. We just sell spiders as a donation and that gets donated to Be Wild, which is a North Carolina organization. So you can check them out if you like. However, August was also a bit nightmarish with two animals. There was one leopard gecko that was dead on arrival to the customer. Um, at the time, we had a 99% success rate shipping out, meaning that about one in every hundred animals would not survive. And I am very comfortable with this. I wish it was less, but this was pretty good. However, when this gecko died, the percentage dropped to 98% arriving. And that was unfortunate. Um, the weather was fine, everything was perfect. I kind of just do my little investigation when there are issues. And the only thing that seems to happen is it looks like an, a FedEx employee mishandled the box at some point because the gecko just seemed to beat up and he did not survive. Um, so that really sucked. Also, somebody, I've mentioned this in a previous video, somebody sent back their ball python. First time we ever had that happen, they were basically unhappy with the attitude and were uncomfortable with the snake. It was a very sweet snake, um, so I'm not really sure what happened there. So to send it back, they dropped it in a Walgreens FedEx drop box. So they were like, why is there a living animal in here in a box? They, like, they put it in a box, and, and so they were able to get a hold of us, and they were like, 
why is there a snake in the Walgreens drop box? And we're like, what? And then we realized the person was sending it back. It was a pain. FedEx was super nice and they actually went out of their way uh, just to have someone take this box separately to the overnight facility and it got back to us happy and healthy. So shout out to FedEx. Although some employees have made mistakes, there's other really great employees there. We made a thousand bucks off bugs because we started selling um, more stuff like millipedes, isopods, roaches, and substrate and kits and all this stuff. You can see it all, but we're actually out of stock at the moment of a lot of it as of recording this. Also, we made money on fees. One person canceled their $700 order, so we made 70 bucks off that single fee um, because I actually raised it. I think at this point I had raised it to 10% what we held, so that was useful. Uh, we had to buy more shipping supplies, get more bugs for the animals, the usual care help and the housing. I also had to pay a $400 bill to my accountant just because someone has to do the taxes for remote scales. And we made a profit of $800 at $72. And by the end of the month, I got my car back and the Tesla service center not only returned it with a brand new bumper, but they actually detailed the entire interior of the car. I was, it, was, it was just a really cool surprise. They vacuumed the entire thing, wiped down all the surfaces, and washed my floor mats. I don't know, it, it put me in a good mood seeing just like, first we had these really nice FedEx customer or FedEx employees that really helped with the ball python. And then the Tesla employees detailed my car for free. Um, that was really nice. I also disassembled some failed shelving <laughs> at, the, at the place, at the location of the animals. Um, I, I was just trying to kind of get rid of some old stuff and start clearing it out because in September, the goal was to do a bit of an animal get, getting rid of speed run. And now it's time for my water sip. September 2020. This is only a couple months ago. Yeah, it's, it's speed run time, boys. We sold 33 animals for a revenue of 6,347 bucks. These were leopard geckos, ball pythons, hognose snakes, crested geckos, a sand boa, a tegu, a box turtle, a Russian tortoise, aquatic turtles, bearded dragons, and a couple spider ball pythons. Also, I sold a pine snake, which was shipped off shortly after selling, but it actually arrived and they sent us a picture like as soon as they unboxed it and it was drooling like a lot. So they thought that it had a respiratory infection. And I am personally the one that ships and checks on every single animal. And no matter how many we sell a day, I go through and make sure everything looks perfect. And if I notice something, I don't ship it yet. I say, sorry, we have to wait. Let me make sure this is okay with the animal. So I personally know for a fact, the pine snake was 100% healthy when I sent it. No RIs, no wheezing, no drooling, no bubbles but it actually arrived with tons of drool. And it was, I confirmed it was the same snake, same everything. So the customers were understanding and uh, they took it to the vet and I, and I said that I would cover, and I said they could either get a full refund on the animal, which was about $400, um, or I would pay for the vet bills if they sent proof of them. So they opted for me to pay for their bills and they um, got the snake the help and we'll get back to that shortly, so. $1,000 in revenue were made off bugs, and $620 off intake kits, money spent in September, $200 in refunds, I bought rodents, uh, also donated the $150 for that spider ball python, and paid out $1,200 for the email support, um, and we had a revenue of $8,000 at the end of the day, which was a profit of $1,500 for September. Um, what else? In September, there was a spider ball python that bit itself and wouldn't let go, fun stuff. Uh, I got my wisdom teeth out this month, which sadly a lot of you saw that video. Um, one person, they requested that their order get canceled because they quote, mistakenly ordered the turtle while high. That's happened more than once for some reason. Um, I sold some more of my personal belongings on eBay. I, I like staying minimal and just making money. So yeah, I sold some stuff. Um, I broke the camera <laughs> on my car because I've been vinyl wrapping it. And um, this time Tesla actually came to my house and fixed it. Really great service. So they were very quick. They tootled on over and gave me a new camera, which I had to pay for out of pocket because I broke it. Um, also animal control came to my house this month, but I'll save that for another time. <laughs> on to October. Woo. So going into September, there were very few animals because we sold and shipped so many previously, obviously. Um, I ended up selling a lot more tanks because I was just getting rid of all the glass tanks aside from my personal animal tanks. Uh, it's just a pain, they're heavy, and they're not good for 
having animals come in and out. I think they're good for permanent animals. So someone I think on Twitter just drove down and picked up all those. So shout out to you for taking those off my hands for a hundred bucks. It was, I'll admit it was a good deal. I also sold a ton of lamps and hides and made $366 off supplies. I started selling basically all used supplies on the site that I would clean and didn't need. So yeah, they, some people got some good deals on used supplies. I shipped a lot more animals and sold 19 more. It was an African fat tail, some leopard geckos, a box turtle, crested geckos, a bearded dragons, a Reeves turtle, and some ball pythons. But a mistake I made for the first time actually was I guess I sexed a ball python incorrectly or I listed it incorrectly on the site because um, somebody received it and sexed it themselves. Turns out it was a male when they wanted a female. Um, they accepted a $40 refund to make up for that. So I, I made an oopsie there, but thankfully they're very understanding. Um, yeah, cause I just, that was just an honest mistake I made there. Uh, a thousand bucks were made on bugs, 375 were made on intakes. And at this point we had officially shipped off all of the animals, the rental home, the first rental home. And so now I'm adjusting the housing price to $500. So the 1,088 is now only 500 a month to house the animals. Cause there's a lot fewer. This is a profit of negative $987 after making 4,000 and spending five thousand next up november it just needed to get these animals out it's almost the end of the year almost time to buy a home hopefully we'll see and so november i lowered the prices actually on a lot of animals just to get them out as quickly as possible and we sold 41 and made five thousand six hundred and fifty nine dollars from the reptiles. This was four spider ball pythons, which was all donated, 10 turtles, which had no profit because red-eared sliders, we can't sell for profit here. One bearded dragon, uh, which was bought with a voucher. So that wasn't actually new revenue. It was revenue from an old voucher purchased. A lot of ball pythons and leopard geckos were sold, which we actually made money on. One person bought two animals. They bought a spider ball python and a leopard gecko. I wish this was more common too. I, I get that most people like buying one animal at a time, but it's way easier when we can ship them together. And again, it's the same way when there's recurring customers. If someone's buying one animal, they're most likely gonna be good for all the animals or bad for all the animals. So if they get approved for one, it's more likely they're approved for all the animals they buy. And yeah, it's, it's convenient. And they got their two new animals. And then one leopard gecko was sold actually to someone locally. And because it's been so cold in parts of NC that uh, I just recently met up with them and gave them their gecko. So they drove over and I just refunded their shipping. So in November, we made $300 on bugs and 425 on intake kits, but I actually ended up disabling the kits completely. So they're no longer purchasable as of filming this. And that started in November because there's so many on the wait list now that I've already prepaid that it's just not worth having more come in right now. Uh, not worth having more of those orders come in because we're not actually accepting. We can't even ship animals anyway, it's too cold and I don't have the space, so I just disabled that temporarily. Uh, we had to buy more rodents and insects, spent $2,000 on shipping, $1,400 on assistance, uh, $700 in refunds, and $365 was donated to Be Wild. And then that was a profit of $1,175. And that was a profit of $1,175. So you might have noticed not every single month was profitable so far. December, we're actually done selling, we're done shipping. So I have the final numbers up till the end of 2020. And after my sip of water, I'm gonna tell you the final month and the last 30 days of what's happened. This month, we have sold seven animals, which made $1,500. Um, the reason there's so few is not because there's a lack of sales, but because there's a lack of animals. We are almost completely out of intake in intake rehomed animals. Yeah, it's just my personals now. However, one of those animals was $600. That was the Dumerals boa that I just did a video on. So that was a, a little hefty chunk. We made $37 on bugs, which are now mostly out of stock. Um, we're out of almost everything. And I spent $700 on shipping, uh, no refunds, no rehomes. And that means that we are done for the end of December and the end of 2020. So it's time to hear those final numbers. December profit was $274, which means our year to date, our earnings, again, 2019 was $770 all time earnings. The end of 2020, this all adds up to a profit 
meaning that money that I put in my own pocket, in my own bank account, was $787. This is exactly $17 more than last year. <laughs> Seeing that I've written out is just flat out depressing. So obviously I'm not living off of this money. I'm living off of YouTube. And again, the goal of Emerald Scales was a diversified income stream. That was one of the goals and that has not happened yet. But Emerald Scales is still going and there are a lot of actually interesting numbers. First off, all time profit of Into My Pocket is $1,557. That is exactly how much I have made from Emerald Scales as a company. Uh, with those 2020 earnings though, I can almost buy an iPhone 12. I can buy at its current price a single Tesla share or I can buy one night at the Trump Hotel in the cheapest room. Yeah, that's that's my, my year of work. But here's some other really interesting numbers. We actually made $80,000 in revenue this year. That's a lot of money. That's a lot that people sent us for various things. It's just that we spend so much money. 21,000 of that is just from people sending us animals, AKA buying intake kits and sending us, that's 21K in revenue. Another cool number is I actually paid $25,000 to actual humans that have helped me. So, um, if they were not employed as contractors or freelancers when were instead servants or slaves, I would have made $25,000, but I, I have to like, it's illegal in the United States to not pay people. Uh, we sold 210 animals in 2020, which means that all time, um, me with the assistance of many other people have sold and rehomed over 500 reptiles and amphibians, which is quite a satisfying number. I would resell to over 400 of those people. Like the far majority, I am very satisfied with. Very close to 500, basically. There's very few I would not resell to. So that's basically, yeah, 500 animals that, in my opinion, are now in really good homes. And that's satisfying. The average order price is $148, but the average profit per animal is $3.74 in 2020. I think maybe the most interesting number to me is that just off the withholding fees, where when people cancel orders, we hold that six to 10%, we made $833 in 2020. Meaning that if I hadn't charged those fees, the year to date earnings would actually be negative $46. The only reason that we made a profit was because I kept people's money after canceling orders. So 2020, that's it. I was excited to do this video. Hopefully you enjoyed. What What's in the future for Emerald Scales? Why does it exist? Why am I still doing it? Well, it makes really interesting content for the videos and the videos are how I make my primary source of income. It's pretty fun in certain ways. The part that sucks is there's really no creativity in it aside from some marketing creativity. Like I much prefer making content and videos and photography and there's none of that with the animals. It's just, it feels like a bare bones business stuff I'm having to do all day. So I am not happy with what I'm doing with Emerald Scales. Um, if, if you were like, this is what you're gonna be doing every day forever, I would definitely quit Emerald Scales. I would shut it down, I'd quit my job, whatever. Um, however, I know this is not permanent. My current plan in this very moment is get a permanent space next year and build it from the ground up, brand new. Start with zero animals, create brand new enclosures, brand new business models, brand new team. I, I won't fire Alice. Just like everything is from scratch and different. I still don't expect to make much money, but basically Emerald Scales is a break even asset that can help give content to my channel, give me experience, give other people um, paychecks, obviously, give a lot of animals a place to come and go from, because there's not many places that do what we do. And I think that's why it's pretty popular. And But you can also see why I'm one of the only people that do this, because there's no money in this. <laughs> Unless you repurpose the animals for stuff like the unboxing videos, which thankfully I can monetize and sell merch and all this stuff, but the videos are not Emerald Scales, that is separate and that's how I stay alive and pay for my personal expenses and my rent and stuff. I was guessing it would be at least like 5,000 in profit, but no, still under a thousand, only $17 more from last year, but at least it's not $17 less from last year. <laughs> what do you think? What did you expect the number to be? And um, yeah, 
do you have any questions i'll i'll stick around in the comments and answer them and i have a lot more content coming definitely check out the vlog series because i like i said everything is documented on this channel it's really cool like i i try to reveal as much as possible i try to share what i would want to see if i was seeing this thing and when people ask how do i start an emerald scales on my own I just say make sure it's a hobby and a side hustle and you stay small and start small and don't get overwhelmed and just take in animals that you actually care about and don't feel the pressure to take in animals like and definitely don't do it if you want to make a gobs of money because there's not that much and there's a lot of expenses that come along with all this. I actually forgot to mention the vet bills though. The pine snake is actually doing fine now. I think it was like $500 in vet bills and the vet said that it was from stress that was their guess so i've never had an animal drool from stress getting shipped but it sounds like the animal actually just got stressed out during shipping and started drooling uncontrollably um but last i heard it's doing all good and we covered those vet bills so it's something we've never done that before and definitely don't think you can just dupe us out of vet bills because we're very cautious to make sure that it's all verified so um yeah that's that that's it let me know what you want to see i ephemeral scales continues to be a thing which is still the current plan then you can see me sitting down and doing another hour-long video at the end of 2021. So, uh, thanks so much for watching my videos. It's the reason that I can do this to begin with, because otherwise Emerald Scales would not exist, and those 500 animals would not have been helped. Because, yeah, it's literally just you. You don't have to give me money. You can literally just watch the videos, and the monetization does the rest. But if you do want to support me, you can join Patreon for five bucks a month. You can buy some merch. This is not my merch. Um, <laughs> and I have more designs and more merchandise on the way. So yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's, that's everything. Shiro fell asleep while I was filming. I'm Alex, and thanks for watching.